Coconuts offer a diverse array of food products depending upon when they're harvested. The water from coconuts harvested where the meat is not yet formed is bitter and is best taken medicinally as a tonic for the kidneys. Once the meat has started to mature but is still soft is when the coconuts are best for drinking. Coconut water is a mild diuretic and should, so it shouldn't be relied upon exclusively for hydration but it can definitely stave off thirst for quite a while. The meat in this coconut is jelly-like and soft and there's a number of stages between this soft jelly-like meat and what you would get in a mature coconut. It's hard to tell for beginners what stage the coconut is at but you want to check for the texture of the husk as well as where the cluster of coconuts is at in relation to other clusters of coconuts on the tree. Coconuts were evolved to live at the beach. Coconuts have a specialized way of gathering water where they draw fresh water that's riding on top of the salty beachside groundwater. Once the coconut is fully matured and the husk is dried out, it's a floating carrying case that can keep the nut viable for a number of months at sea so that the coconut can wash ashore on some distant island and perpetuate the species elsewhere. When it's fully mature like this one is, is when it's best for eating, it's highest in calories, full of trace minerals. Uh, this is when you would also strain it to make coconut milk and oil. Once the sprout has formed, and you've got another food product, you want to gather it while there's not too many roots. This one has a few roots, so it's not going to be so bad. Once it has a number of roots and is firmly in the ground, the nutritional value of the endosperm drops. The endosperm is the thickened part on the end of any sprout, and that thickened part is responsible for nurturing the young sprout until it's able to draw its nutrients from the ground. The meat, which was once thickened, like you saw in the last frames, is now shriveled and is very, very oily. Where the water was once at in the middle of the coconut, there's now a soft, spongy, cotton candy apple sort of textured uh, endosperm, which is fluffy, light, tasty. I don't know, maybe it's some people compare it to angel food cake. I don't know if I'd go quite that far, but hey, survival situation, hunger makes for the best seasoning of all. When the shoot has fully formed and the leaves are starting to unfold is when it's best to harvest for hearts of palm. When the tree gets older, it's a lot more difficult to extract the heart of palm from the center of the palm tree, so it's easiest to collect when these are still young. They can be quite abundant in beachside places that aren't picked over too much by people. The heart of palm is a nice trailside nibble, really tasty. A little bit more coconutty than commercial heart of palm, really delicious. If you don't have modern tools, or even stone tools for that matter, you want to find a rock that comes to a rough point. Coconuts have three ridges going up the husk. What you want to do is you want to flip the, the coconut husk upside down, striking the top of the coconut centered on each of these ridges. Normally, the fibers, especially in a green coconut, are well bonded, but the husk on this coconut seems to have rotted it shouldn't affect the meat on the inside, but the husk itself isn't holding together very well. And usually these ridges pop off quite easily uh, when struck only a few times. This one is making me work quite a bit for it. Usually I don't bother to drink the water from these matured coconuts because the diuretic effect is a lot stronger once the meat is matured and there's a lot more oil suspended in the water. If you have access to stone tools, I find it easiest to make a spike to open up your, to dehusk your coconut with. I'm using a selt here for the initial chopping and then I'll use a flake blade to carve this into a sharp point. The thickness of stone tools makes it difficult to really chop apart the husk that's on the outside of the coconut. It takes a lot longer than this method does. Once I've gotten far enough through the tree I'll break it off and then use that flake tool which you can tell from that cut on my thumb is pretty sharp and I'll use that to sharpen up the spike. What you want to do is you want to turn the coconut on its side 
and puncture each of those ridges. And using a downward thrust and twisting motion, you can pry off the husk of the coconut. Another nice thing about removing the husk in this manner is that this husk is an excellent cordage material. And I'll save this and soak it for later extraction of these fibers. Once you've removed the bulk of the husk, you can just work away at the last few fibers surrounding the coconut shell. Coconut shells make a high-grade charcoal that's used in modern water filters and up until petroleum products were available was ground down and made into fine artists inks. I'm trying to preserve this coconut shell so that I can make a couple of cups out of the shell of the coconut. If you strike the coconut perpendicular to the ridges it usually breaks in half pretty cleanly. The wood fibers in the coconut shell itself are very random and so carving it is somewhat difficult. It's usually pretty hard to get much more than a simple spoon out of the shell itself but the dark black wood which shines up to a really glossy finish makes for beautiful products. This husk has been soaked and now I'm pounding it to remove the fibers that are in the husk. If you don't have the time to soak you can just pound the husk to remove the fibers, but the longer you soak it, the less pounding that is needed. And if you soak it for a number of months, then there's really hardly any pounding at all. I'm just going to work these fibers back and forth, tear them apart, and beat them up a little bit so that I remove the last of that coconut husk, and they're ready for weaving. The mature coconut has a slightly rougher fiber, and the younger green coconuts have a softer, smoother fiber. The ancient Hawaiians would make ropes that were traded to mariners passing by on their long journeys on the Pacific. As you can imagine, the softer supple ropes made from the green coconut fibers were in much higher demand among these mariners as they were a lot easier on your hands. If you didn't treat the ancient Hawaiians very well, you better expect not to find any of that soft, supple rope in any supply. Since that was your only stop on most of your long voyages for thousands of miles, you really had no choice but to treat the locals with respect. The ropes made from this coconut senate, as it's called, are very strong, uh, almost unbreakable in short lengths, and long-lasting. The durability of the coconuts for open ocean voyages uh, make this so that it's a somewhat saltwater-resistant material, which is hard to find in plant fibers.